Hey, how's it going, fam? Uh, it's Don here from Peggy and Don. As you can see, I'm coming to you from the pantry, the one we call the general store. Now, I come out here all the time. Uh, I got to do my daily inspections and things like that. Uh, we did a we did a tour, a little short tour last week where we showed you our shelves, showed you most of our shelves. You know, our dry goods and our canned meats and our health and beauty supplies, the spices and all that kind of thing. But looking back, I realized that we never really showed you the full pantry. There's a whole section of the pantry that we haven't shown. So I want to take some time to show you another part of the pantry that I don't think we've shown anybody yet. It's the back of the store. So the first thing I'm going to show you in the back of the pantry is our drinking water palette. Now I want to specifically say drinking water because a lot of preppers, you know, professional and long-term preppers can tell you that this would not be enough water to cover drinking, hygiene, and cooking purposes. Uh, for the hygiene and cooking, we have a 100 gallon water bottle upstairs in the bathroom. I guess we'll show you all that on a coming video. But this water down here is specifically for drinking. Um, we have the three gallon jugs that we got from Walmart that one time. and. Uh, yeah, we've been able to fill these up for a dollar seventeen. So once we go through those, I'll go back to the Walmart and get them refilled. Um, we also have all these bottled, all these uh, cases of bottled water. Now you'll notice that they're sitting on a pallet. Um, for those of y'all who are know about concrete, you don't want to store water on concrete because concrete is susceptible to uh, drastic temperature changes. And that could allow that could allow you to lose the purity in your water. Like I said, it's like some sort of uh, absorption. I don't really know how it works, but there's a lot of research done on that, and everybody has decided that you do not store your water directly on concrete. So we have this pallet. I got this pallet from uh, Emo's Pizza, <laughs> which is something that is only found. I think it's only found in like Missouri, maybe Illinois, or something like that. But uh, they were nice enough to give me that pallet, so uh, thank you, Emos. Now over here, over here we have the frozen food section. We have two freezers. Now there is a school of thought amongst a lot of preppers that uh, freezers are extremely unreliable. <clears throat> they are susceptible to power outages and you have a chance of losing a large part of your food stores if you have an extended power outage. We are trying to mitigate those risks. So I've done a lot of research on it. Um, in case of a power outage, if your freezers are 75% full like ours are, let me just go ahead and show you. Yeah. There we go. That looks beautiful. I didn't even know it was neat. <laughs> But anyway, if your freezers are 75% full and you have a power outage, it will still stay at good freezing temperatures for at least 24 hours. What happens is the frozen foods are actually keeping themselves cold. By touching other frozen foods, that's how they stay together. You know how people huddle together to share body warmth, where the foods will be huddled together in your freezer, keeping each other cold. Uh, so as long as you don't open the door, that's extremely important. As long as you don't open the door when the power is out, you will have at least 24 hours of your food staying at a nice frigid cold temperature. And because I don't want to open my door in case of a power outage, I got this little device here. This little device here. This is a wireless thermostat. So inside, I'm going to open it again. Inside each freezer are these little sensors. Now those sensors, sensor 1 is over here and sensor 2 is over here, those sensors are constantly sending a, a, a temperature reading every minute to the reading device that I have magnet, magnetically attached to the freezer. Uh, it came with the magnets, you don't have to go buy magnets. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a link in the description to this item if you, if you want it. It costs like less than 20 bucks. But I'm able to keep a constant reading on what's going on inside my freezers. And you can set alarms. Say the temperature in the, free, say the, temperature in the freezer goes above 5 degrees. Then an alarm will sound telling me that my freezer has uh, gone outside of tolerance. 
and that will alert me that I need to go ahead and get it hooked back up. I also want to give y'all a, a very important tip, I think. Don't skimp out on the batteries. I'm using lithium batteries, AA batteries in the sensors because lithium batteries are supposedly good up to a negative 40 degrees. You don't want to have dollar store batteries or other batteries that might fail you in the freezer. It's too important. And that brings up the second part about protecting my our freezer. I have a 4K generator that I will be setting up in the backyard and have a line run to the basement just for the freezers themselves. Now we're going to have two lines coming out of that generator, but one line is going to be uh, set aside for the freezers. It has about a 1K, it requires about uh, a 1K burst in order to start back up, but once it starts, it's only using like 200 watts. I mean, both of them are only using about 200 watts apiece. So I can run those and still run many, many other items on my generator. If you're going to be using a generator, you got to make sure you have a load plan. You got to make sure your family knows um, what kind of items will not be used while plugged up to the generator. Like I said, we'll be covering the generator in an upcoming video. And we'll run for two hours apiece every 12 hours and get them back down to their core temperatures and they're going to be fine. I might run them a little longer, maybe two hours a piece every uh, eight hours. So that way we'll be able to unplug them at night when we're going to sleep and we can use the, uh, the majority of the generator power for a singular space heater. Another tip about keeping items cold in your freezer, there's that other sensor. The other day, I took an empty bottle, empty two liter plastic bottle, and filled it about three-fourths of the way with water. Now, that's, that's to keep that uh, joint conduction, joint cold air uh, induction going on. So that's a good little tip to have. If you got space in your freezer forward, fill a uh, two-liter bottle up about three-fourths of the way with water, and then just place it inside your freezer. That's going to that's gonna keep a lot of the uh, items around it cold. It's going to thaw much slower than your meats would, and it'll be, it'll be like calling like having your, a, big, a big piece of ice in your cooler. That water bottle filled up weighs about three pounds, so it's like having a three pound block of ice in a large cooler. The coolers are insulated, and so it will last uh, quite a bit, quite a long time. Here's something I also wanna make sure I point out. If you are going to be including uh, frozen foods and freezers in your prepper's pantry, it is very, very important that you meal prep. You don't want to get up in the morning and say you want to have sausage and eggs and the sausages are still frozen in the freezer. That means you're not going to be able to eat them for two, three hours or so. I don't know how long it takes, for, takes sausages to thaw out. Or a pot roast. You're going to have to plan that stuff. So meal planning is extremely important with uh, pantry items. You don't want to figure out that you're going to have a meal and then realize that you can't because you're not able to have access to it. Um, so all that being said, I still, I still feel very confident and uh, that made, we made the right choice in having these freezers. A lot of preppers would not agree. These are not recommendations. These are just letting you know uh, what we are doing and what we are doing in order to protect what we have and keep it uh, fresh and keep it working for us. If you decide you don't want to freeze and you want to have all your meat in cans, canned meats are okay but they often have a lot of salt or preservatives or I don't know, you lose the freshness. There's something much better about being able to thaw out a piece of chicken or thaw out a piece of beef and it be in the same kind of condition as it was when it, fresh, when it was fresh or at least close to it. So I don't want to live off of canned meats. I, man does not live by corned beef alone. I don't know where that's written but uh, I'm pretty sure it's true. <laughs> I, guess I could survive off of it, but that's not what we're doing. We want to try to maintain a healthier lifestyle, a happier lifestyle, a more, um, a more enjoyable lifestyle. So in order to do so, it's important that we have access to fresh, delicious foods that we have. Peggy is a fantastic cook, but even she can only do so much with a can of corned beef or a can of mackerel every, every day. Yeah.
Now, if you're a vegan, then that might not be a uh, might not be a, a something that you consider but hey we also have those frozen vegetables down there and they taste better than the canned vegetables they are closer to fresh they're flat they're flash frozen and they they come closer to fresh another point i want to make I, I, as i'm sitting down here thinking about it, i keep coming with these other points if you're going to be th storing a lot of meats in your freezer please do not purchase a package of meat from the store and just put it in your freezer we did this whole long video about uh, vacuum sealing your meats. It does not take much. I think our vacuum sealer costs less than 40 bucks uh, with the bags, less than 50 bucks. But if you store that styrofoam, you store it sitting on styrofoam with a piece of saran wrap, that is not going to protect your meats for very long. Now, according to the FDA says it is safe to eat freezer burned meat. There's a difference between safe and preferred. So what you're going to prefer, what you're going to want to do, take them out of those little packs, get you some nice vacuum seal bags, and vacuum seal it before you store it. You see what Peggy had in the freezer. All of our meat is vacuum sealed. Either it, was, either it came vacuum sealed from the store, or Peggy went and vacuum sealed it herself. That is a big time commitment, but it is worth it. Right, like I said, right now we're having no issues with our preppers pantry. I realized that we're going to be going out. We thought we were just going to stay in for like completely for six months, but every once in a while, I think we're going to be able to do a curbside pickup for stuff like uh, a little bit more almond milk or for um, salads and stuff like that. I want, I like to have a fresh salad every once in a while. Peggy likes for me to have a fresh salad, and so I like to make sure we have that available. And while I'm down here, I'd like to give y'all a little update about the, uh, we call them the moisture eliminators that I got from the dollar store. Um, they are actually working very well. Uh, there's not much, mo not much moisture down here because it is getting kind of cool. But the loose pellets that were at the top of the box are now stuck together because they had gotten wet and it's been absorbing moisture. So both of the uh, Dollar Tree moisture absorbers that I have are working very well and I think it was a great buy. If you haven't already gotten one and your Dollar Tree still have them, and of course if you got a pantry, you might want to go ahead and grab a couple of them up. Um, we're also storing uh, some potatoes down here. People say, hey, your potatoes should be fine if you just keep them in an open area where it's cool. Our our basement is maintained at between 70 and 73 degrees so it's always cool down here um, so the potatoes are doing fine matter of fact the uh, cheese and potatoes that Peggy made me yesterday if you haven't seen that video we got the potatoes from down here uh, we also have uh, Peggy has onions down here she's storing the onions in a, uh, a piece of pantyhose that's another tip we got from one of our other subscribers uh, we're always getting tips and we really appreciate that Right now, that's about all I have. Um, I really enjoy you guys uh, following us. I really enjoy all the support and the comments. I promise you, we're not experts. We got into this about four and a half, five months ago. But the only reason we were able to learn so much is from looking at other YouTubers and then the comments that people are bringing to us. We can't watch everything, but they are bringing us comments that have really increased my confidence in our ability to get through this and be able to do what we are doing. And for that, I thank you guys. Um, like I said, that's all I have. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. I know I do. And Peggy does too. So we really appreciate it. Um, hit like and comment. And a matter of fact, hit that notification bell. So you'll know when we're posting new stuff. I'll be doing my generator video in a couple of days. And we'll let you know how that goes. So until then... Just want to say, get out there and do something good for yourself and for others as well. <laughs> Y'all take it easy, fam.